So for the longest time, Kick2 has been the de facto standards for making kick drums inside Trance. Personally, I haven't used it. I either use samples for my kick drums or make them inside of Zero. But now I've recently found a plugin that can actually replace Kick2 and do it a little bit better in my opinion. Quick intermission here, this is Editor Projector about a week later. I just quickly want to shout out Mark or Mr. Speaker, who is the person who actually recommended this plugin to me in the interview that I did with him and Illusion. I'm not using Kick2 anymore. Actually, I'm using the kick drum from Audicia, I believe. And this is a big help because it's super easy and, and simple to use. That interview got criminally few views, so go check it out because there's a lot more useful information in it. Now let's get back into what I was actually trying to say. So here you can see we are in a project where I'm just experimenting a lot. As you can see, there's a lot of different things going on in terms of sound design and stuff like that. A whole bunch of different interesting patches. Uh, there's more stuff over here as well. But the main focus is going to be on the kick drum that you can see right over here. As you can see, originally I was using one of these samples over here. And to be honest, listening to this sample now, it sounds kind of terrible. Like it's definitely not the best kick, it has a really strange click to it, I would say. And this kick actually comes from my Psychedelic Drum Pack Volume 1 over here, where you can see I have a whole bunch of in-tempo kicks that I've just rendered out. So this is just one of those. Now the way that I designed all of these kicks was that they were made in a separate project and I really designed them to fit well with the baseline and spend a little bit less time worrying about things like the transient. And I do think that shows a little bit because often what I find myself needing to do is do a lot of EQing in the higher frequencies to get the transient to sit right in the mix. That being said, all of these kicks are definitely not unusable and I've used them in many of my productions that you guys actually like. So it's not that they're wrong per se, they just need a lot of work to actually get them to fit in the mix. And the main reason why that is the case has to do with the way that they were designed. Let's have a look at this project over here, which is where I designed all of the kick drums. You can see all of them over here. And if I go into it, you can see that we basically have three different components to it. We have a body source, we have a transient source, and we have a hat source. And all of these are individual like serum patches over here. You can see we have the serum patch over here that is responsible for the body. And you can just see that this is kind of like a kick setup where we have one LFO modulating the course pitch over here. And then we have another LFO, which is actually going to the master tuning. And then we have a third LFO that is responsible for the shape of the volume. We also have transients over here, which as you can see, again, is just a serum patch. In this case, we're using these kick attacks over here to just add a little bit of extra attack to the start of the sound. And then finally, we have a hat source, which is just a hat in the sampler where I've just set up the decay and the sustain all the way down so that I can shape the hat however I want it to. All of that went through some different processing. You can see all of the individual processing change over here as well. That was then recorded onto a separate audio track where I have another set of processing to just adapt it a little bit more and make it a little bit better. And then finally from there, I was able to record the final kicks that made up the kicks of this pack over here. Now in the way that I was doing all of this, it allowed me to easily change the BPM and render the kicks out for a whole bunch of different BPMs. And I was always able to make sure that it exactly worked with all of the baselines through some very specific techniques. The main thing being with that technique is that if we look over here, right here when the first bass note starts to play, the kick is always at a zero crossing, or at least like very close to it. So you can see that the baseline transient doesn't line up with a peak over here, but it lines up right about here in like a very small dip of volume so that there's a lot of space for the transient to actually exist and it doesn't get suppressed once it goes into the mastering limiter. Now this really has to do with the way that I do stuff like phase alignment and all of that, like technical stuff of making sure that the kick and bass works well together. So really at the time when I was making these kick drums, that is what I was focusing on. Now back in this project over here, let's have a look at the actual plugin in question that for me is going to now start making all of my kick drums. What I'll still probably do is make a whole bunch of kick drums in advance, render them out in sample format and then have the ability to use them within my track as opposed to making a kick drum for each individual project that I'm working on. And the plugin that is going to allow me to do that is this plugin kick drum over here created by Audia. I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing that, it's a little bit hard to pronounce, but you can see that this plugin is very big and it looks kind of the same as you do in kick two. The only difference being that you cannot really import samples and there's not really any post processing in there, but all of those things can be easily replaced with different things outside of the plugin. The main reason why I would choose this plugin over Kick2 though is because I think that this plugin has some functionalities that make it far superior than Kick2. 
So let's just dive into it. As you can see, we have the kick over here and we can shape the pitch however you want. This is just your standard kind of pitch curve that you're also familiar with from kick two itself. If I play the kick drum, this is what it sounds like right now. Just a standard kind of kick drum that we're all familiar with. And if we switch over here, we can go to the amplitude as well. And you can see that there's an EQ built in here as well. And that is actually the very first feature that I want to talk about, because you can see that even though the amplitude is shaping the curve here, it's not exactly following the curve. And there's a really good reason for that. And that is because the EQ is taking into account when calculating the shape of the kick. So what is happening is it's not actually applying the EQ to the output signal of the kick drum that is being generated, but it calculates what the EQ would do to the signal if it is being included in there. And then it subtracts kind of all of the phase shift that you would get from a normal EQ if you just apply it to a signal and just applies it directly to the volume instead. Now, if I turn the EQ off, you can see that it does exactly follow the shape of the curve over here, which is really nice. It's just very nice and visual this way. But you may see that if I turn the EQ on or off, that there's no actual phase shift being done on the kick drum over here. It is just adapting the volumes as if the EQ was in place without applying any of the phase shift. Now, the reason why this works, the reason why you're able to do this is because Essentially, when it comes to the kick drum, it is just a sine wave with a pitch envelope. And that is the pitch envelope that we're modifying over here. There isn't really much more to it. So you can see that at any point in time, it is just like one frequency. So we can just look at the EQ. Okay, for this frequency, we'll have to go down a little bit. For this frequency, we'll have to go down a lot over here. And then for these frequencies over here, we don't modify the volume in any way. And you can just apply that to the already existing amplitude curve that you have over here. The second thing which is really fundamentally different about this plugin is that when it starts generating the kick drum, it starts at the end instead of the beginning. What that means is if I move the pitch around, you can see that the ending doesn't change. It just starts to change the beginning. This means that you can make a kick drum that is in phase with your baseline and then you can edit that kick drum and it will still remain in phase with the baseline. If you were to do this in kick two, you would have to redo the phase alignment between the kick drum and the bass. So I think the best way that I can show you how this plugin works is just by opening up a new instance. So I'm just going to do that. I'm going to go into my plugins and get myself a new instance of kick drum. I'll quickly get a MIDI trigger. As you can see by default, it opens up very, very small and it's not really usable, but you can just stretch it out like this to the full screen and now you have a nice big workspace that you can edit the kick drum in and you can really dig down into the details as well. Now the very first thing that I want to do is set it to an eighth note as opposed to 16 notes. So we're just going to move it up. That means that our kick drum will be in length with the standard length that you would get for a side trans kick drum. Obviously, if you're making something like high tech, then something like a 16 note is going to work better because you have the one 16 note for the kick drum and then the three 16 notes for the bass line. But with this type of side trends that I tend to make, an eighth note is actually what you want for your kick drum. And now we can start to edit some of the points here. Keep in mind, if you're in this big screen, it may be a little bit hard to play because uh, you cannot really see the DAW because it, the plugin is taking up the whole screen. There is a button over here that just allows you to play the kick drum. So that's really useful if you're in this full screen mode and you're just tweaking things. So that's what we're going to do. What I'm going to start off with is making four points and I want to just slightly change this shape over here because for side trends, this is kind of the shape that we're going for. Maybe a bit more like this. We'll lower this bit a bit. What we'll do is make this a little bit higher. I'm going to work in the key of F sharp for this one. Let's make it so that it lowers a little bit quicker, a little bit earlier over here. And we can just tweak it however you want. We can switch to the gain over here and we can start to EQ and uh, shape the gain over here. Maybe we want a little bit more punch here. Maybe we want to remove this bit over here. As you can see, there's already an EQ point by default, which is on. So we'll turn that off. And one of the things that I personally like to do on almost all of my kick drums is to take a low pass on it and we'll just set a low pass over here. Maybe let's go with like 12 dB per octave. We'll lower the Q down maybe a little bit. And now we have something like this. It's just a little bit less sharp and it leaves a little bit more space for the hats in the mix. Maybe this is a little bit too much though. So I'm just going to move it over here. 
you can see that there's this circle which you can move in all four directions. And then you have these individual bars over here that you can move like this and like this. So if you're already happy with, for example, the Q factor in this case, you can just move the frequency without affecting the Q, which is really nice. And this is true for any points that you see over here. This one has the same thing. If you're happy with the position that it has in terms of the time, you can just change the volume of this by just dragging it over here. And likewise, you can drag the position without changing the volume over here. So I'm just going to give this one a little bit more body. I'm going to shape this curve a little bit more to the left here. And I'll make this one a little bit longer so that we just have a little bit of a fuller kick drum. Let's go back into the pitch and maybe alter the transient a bit. I'd like to have this a little bit less sharp by just going like this. And then we'll tuck this back in so that it's a really short click. Maybe the starting frequency can be a little bit lower, which you can see over here. Something like that. You can imagine that there's a lot of tweaking going on. Maybe you want to dive in a little bit more with some of the EQ features over here. I'd like to up the Q maybe a little bit to just, I don't know, shape this area a bit more over here. Like that. I might opt to give it a little bit more punch at around 150 hertz. So that's up, that's over here. The Q a bit. So you can see essentially we have two workflows here, right? We're able to EQ the kick drum and we're able to change the volume. And it just takes both of them into account and just generates one kick for you. Now, once you're done making your kick drum, you can, of course, just use it in MIDI like this. And just like we had before, have a MIDI trigger for it. And it will just play it every time it gets MIDI input. It's independent of the note that you play. So every note, if I turn this on for hearing it, will generate the same kick drum. It doesn't pitch the kick drum around for you. So you would have to do that in the plugin itself. If you want to change the pitch, you just, again, go into the plugin here and you can change the pitch over here that it uses. As you can see, there's a very easy slider that allows you to re-pitch the kick drum for whatever key that you're working in. Keep in mind that the kick drum is landing on the final frequency over here. So if you're doing something like this, obviously you're no longer staying in key because it goes back up again. So the pitch is going back up, meaning that it's not necessarily in the key that you've selected over here. But if you're happy with your pitch and you're happy with your kick drum, as I said, you can play it just via MIDI if you want to, but you can also click over here and this will copy the sample to your clipboard, which means that if I just go into my sample over here and I hit control V here, you can see that it makes a new sample and this is the kick drum that we've just generated. Now there are some more features in this plugin that I want to go over now. The very first thing is that you have actually three instances of the plugin. So if you click copy over here, you're able to have a copy of the kick drum or you can start over again as well. And you can just modify that and you can do whatever you want here. And you can see now we have some modifications to it and you can A, B and in this case even C test three different kick drums at the same time. Now say that you're working on your kick drum and you want a little bit more definition in the pitch that you want your kick to end up on. What you can do is turn off this pitch snap over here because normally as you can see you move it up and down and it will snap exactly to the frequency of the key over here. But maybe you want a little bit more detail. Maybe you just want it to be a little bit lower, but you don't like it when it goes, for example, on F1 as opposed to F sharp. You think that that is a little bit too low. If you really want to hone in on the details like that, you can turn it off here and you can be really precise with setting this frequency over here. You can go in between the semitones. To be honest, for normal operation, it is nice to keep this on because it's very useful to have it just in key, especially for when you're doing phase alignment. It just makes phase alignment a lot easier. Speaking about phase alignment, you no longer have to have plugins on your bass drum to actually do phase alignment because you can do phase alignment right here in this plugin. As you can see, we have this phase adjuster over here, which first of all, if you turn it on, it just allows you to flip the waveform upside down. So that's a 180 degree phase shift. That is very useful already, but you can also, as you can see here, determine where the zero crossing is going to start. So as you can see, we're just changing the face of the kick now. So as you can imagine, just in terms of the control that we have with this plugin, it is much easier to work with it like this. As I already said, I haven't really worked with kick two, but I've seen enough footage of it that I kind of know how the workflow works. 
And just with the idea of the kick being generated from the end as opposed to the beginning, this is a much easier way of actually working with it. And with all of the features that this particular plugin has, you can see that it is very easy to just shape the kick drum exactly the way that you want it to in relation to phase alignment and all of that stuff, which I found with kick two, that is not really the focus of it, but with this plugin, it really is the focus of it. It, it just allows you to shape the kick drum in a way that really makes sense for Psytrance. Now this plugin isn't specifically designed for Psytrance, but I do think that it was designed with it a little bit in mind because these are the things that you need to worry about when it comes to Psytrance kick creation. That's together with the exact length that you can set over here, together with the control that you have over it, together with being able to EQ your kick drum without actually changing any of the phase shifts and the phase imbalances, allows you to, even after the fact, change the tone of your kick a little bit without causing a disturbance to the phase shift that you've so carefully built when you first do that. So that is really, really powerful. And therefore, I think that this plugin is an instant pickup. It is also a little bit cheaper. I got this on a sale for 22 euros, but it's normally 44 euros if I'm not mistaken. I do quickly want to say that I'm not being paid to show this plugin. I just think that it's a nice plugin and I want to point it out. The developers have no idea that I'm making this video. I do now want to take the time to maybe talk about one or two things that I would like to see updated in this plugin. First of all, when it comes to the interface, it is very cluttered. The reason for that is, especially in this view over here, you have these big like labels on here and that really makes it cluttered. It can be even worse. Like if you look at it in this view, it is okay. I still would like to be able to completely remove the EQ here and just be able to focus on the waveform. Also remove the volume shape over here and just be able to completely focus on this curve over here, which is, in my opinion, the important part of this graph over here, the pitch graph is obviously the, the pitch of it, the way that the envelope works. It can be even worse. As you can see, we still have all of these clutters over here. You can see that all, even when you're trying to add points or maybe access some of the curves, sometimes you end up clicking on individual things that you may not want to edit, like these things over here. Being able to turn those off would be a very nice option. And just decluttering the interface would be very nice as well. The other thing is that with the way that this represents the waveform, it is not skewed in the way that it is in Kick 2, where in Kick 2, what you'll find is that the transient takes up a lot more space on the pitch envelope. And that is because you're going to spend a lot of time worrying about the details of your transient. And right now, what happens is that if you really want to hone in on the details, there's not a lot of space that you have to do it. Now you're able to zoom in over here. As you can see, I can zoom in and out of the waveform, which is really nice. To be honest, this is not that useful because this is just changing the amplitude. It doesn't really like tell you anything about the kick drum. What would be really nice if you were able to zoom in over here, which currently there's no real way to do that, I believe. I mean, I've dragged around here. I've held action keys and stuff like that, but it just doesn't allow you to zoom in over here. So it would be nice to be able to edit the transient in a lot more detail than we're currently able to. The final thing is, if I zoom out again, you can see that I have this waveform here. I can click this and it will copy it to my clipboard and you can save it as a sample as I showed, but you can not drag it and drop it into a project. As you can see, it's not holding a file for me. Now I am running Ableton in administrator mode for some of the things that I do inside of Ableton that is needed, but that does mean that other drag and drop things also don't work. So for example, if I go back into the sample that we have just created, if I just drag this in here, this also doesn't work. So I'm not sure if dragging and dropping is disabled because of that reason, or if it's just something inherent with the plugin that drag and drop from the plugin into the audio track over here is just completely disabled. That being said, I do believe I have other plugins, mainly this one over here, the empty drum power kit thing here uh, that I like to use for drum fills, that if I go to the grooves here, and let me just open a quick one so that we can see. If I drop this in here, you can see that this is working. This allows me to just drop in a MIDI file and that just works. So I believe it has to do with the plugin and I would like to see that implemented because that would massively speed up the workflow instead of having to copy it, go back into here, go into my samples and all of that stuff, and then go into the pack where I want to save it, put it in there, and then go into here, go into the browser, find that same sample again. Uh, in this case, that's over here, and then drag it in here. That takes a lot of time, where that doesn't really need to be the case, of course. It would be nice to be just able to drop it into the project immediately, and you just create your kick drums, drop it in there, and then you start working from there. So overall, I would say definitely pick up this plugin if you're interested in making your own kick drums. It is, in my opinion, as I said, a better option than kick two at this point, because of the technical ways that it allows you to be a little bit more in control of your kick drum and how it actually works. 
And just the fact that with this particular plugin, you can design your kicks in a way that you don't necessarily have to phase align the bass to the kick drum. You can just phase align the kick drum to the bass when you're actually creating your kick drum, meaning that there's one less step in the kick bass creation process. So that's going to be it for the video. I hope that you enjoyed this one. Let me know if you did by leaving a like. And if you're new here, make sure that you subscribe. You can also support the channel by checking out some more of my contents. There should be two videos up on the screen right now. One is my latest tutorial and the other one is a video recommended to you by YouTube. So just click one and enjoy the video. So that's going to be it. I hope to see you in the next one. Bye bye.